There was a time when toilets were so simple that we didn't even want to stay longer than necessary inside them, if you know what I mean. But now, they become so comfortable that aside from finishing yourself, you can even read or check your phone while doing it. In the center of all, what makes it possible would be the invention of flush toilet. In this video, we are going to explain how a flush toilet work. So if you are thinking about going to the bathroom, you can bring your phone and learn about toilets. If we look at a flush toilet, there is a toilet seat called bowl that we can sit on, and a tank at the back that stores water for flushing. Toilet seat has two covers. Open the first cover for number two and second cover for number one but only for men. Second cover is also used to drip down the leftover water droplets. After you finished, pull down the flush switch and all the water in the tank will flow down, bringing everything you put in the bowl. When the tank gets empty, water will fill automatically. The bowl will also be filled with little bit of water. Because of that water that left inside the bowl, the smell from the sewer won't reach the toilet. The reason why the little bit of water can stay in the bowl even though all the water get drained when we flush is because of the unique s shape path of the bowl. It is also the reason why we need about 2 gallons of water to flush completely. This way of pumping water from higher reservoir to lower reservoir through an upward curve is called siphoning. The U-shaped part of the S-curve is for holding water inside the bowl and it prevents smell from releasing. When you pour the water inside the bowl, the excess water will just overflow, leaving the U-shape filled as it was before. But if you pour enough water to fill up the entire S-shaped tube, the siphon process will start. When the water at the end of the tube wants to flow down by gravity, it creates the vacuum inside the tube. It is like pulling the syringe while closing its tip with your finger. When there is a vacuum, the outside atmospheric pressure will push the water up the inverted U-shape to replace the previous water and the cycle continues until there is no enough water left. That is why toilet needs to flush with so much water so that it can fill up the entire S-shaped tube and start siphoning. The bowl consists of many water outlets for flushing. The main outlet is called siphon jet that provides enough water for siphoning. The other tiny outlets that clean up the bowl surface are called rim jet. When we pull the flush switch, the water inside the tank drains through both siphon jet and rim jets. As a side note, sucking the oil from a motorcycle and let it drain inside the bottle is also called siphoning. Since the two gallons inside the toilet tank gets drained every time it flushes, in order to refill the tank, the inlet pipe is connected to the main water storage located at certain height. By doing so, the water can flows down automatically and fills the tank. But when the tank is full, the water inlet must be cut off to prevent from overflowing. For that, a float valve is used inside the toilet tank. A float valve could be a ball connected to a lever and the lever is used to pull or push the diaphragm that controls the water inlet. By this arrangement, when the water level rises to a certain height, the lever will push the diaphragm and closes the water inlet. By making the lever arm longer to one side, it can have enough force to push the diaphragm and cut off the high pressure water from the main storage. However, it has some weaknesses. When the tank gets drained, the ball and lever will be at the lowest height and the diaphragm will be opened at its fullest allowing the water to flow inside. But with the increasing water level, the ball rises along with the lever and the diaphragm opening will get smaller and smaller. This reduces the water flow rate over time, so it takes some times to refill the tank. That might not be feasible for public restrooms with people waiting in lines. Therefore, new modern toilets use the silent fill valve design. In this design, Instead of a ball float with attached to a lever, it uses a cylinder float that goes up and down over the pipe. The motion of the float is transferred to a lever. When the water reaches its assigned level, the float moves up and needs to close the water filling. If we take a closer look, water from the main line comes through the inner pipe and flow to the outer pipe that refill the toilet tank. The diaphragm is placed over the inner and outer pipe and controls the water flow. But not like the previous old design, the diaphragm is not directly controlled by the float lever. Instead, a small steel pin with multiple cross section is inserted in the diaphragm and it can move up and down with the float lever. The diaphragm is tightly seated with a cap on top. 
Let's look at a state that a toilet tank is in full level. At this state, the float is at its maximum height and the steel pin is at its minimum point. Since the steel pin width is at the same size as the diaphragm hole, the water over the diaphragm is trapped inside. These water comes through the gap between the steel pin narrow section and diaphragm hole and then through the two tiny holes at the neck of the diaphragm. Since the trapped water has the same pressure as the inlet water, the inlet water can't push the diaphragm to open. Besides, the water inside the outlet pipe is higher than the tank water level. When it wants to flow down by gravity, it creates a partial vacuum inside the outlet pipe. That partial vacuum also pulls the diaphragm, closing completing from the inlet pipe. When we pull down the flush switch, it pulls the chain that is connected to the rubber water gate at the bottom of the tank. Then all the water in the tank flows down the bowl. At the same time, the float also gets lower along with the water level. The lowering of the float raises the steel pin inside the diaphragm. At the end of the flash, the float is at its lowest point and the narrow section of the steel pin aligns with the diaphragm holes. At that moment, the high pressure water that trapped over the diaphragm releases from the diaphragm hole. Since there are no more water holding back the diaphragm, the high pressure water from the inlet push back the diaphragm and flow inside the toilet tank. At this stage, steel pin is blocking the water from entering inside the diaphragm. When the water level inside the tank increases, the float moves upwards and pushing the steel pin downwards. When the water level reaches its maximum height, the steel pin's narrow section aligns with the diaphragm hole, enabling the high pressure water flow inside the diaphragm. Since the water pressure over the diaphragm and under the diaphragm are the same, the diaphragm closes down the water inlet. The water inside the outlet pipe stays higher than the tank water level because of the partial vacuum it could create. That partial vacuum also pulls down diaphragm on its seat, completely closes the water inlet. Modern toilets can refill its tanks in about 30 seconds and ready for a second flush. At this point, you understand how water ins and outs of the toilet. To refill the bowl, the bowl refill tube is connected to the outlet pipe and is attached to the overflow tube. By doing so, while the tank is refilling, some water goes to the bowl refill tube and fill up the bowl. Overflow tube is directly connected to the bowl, and for some reason, if the silent fill valve failed to close the water inlet, the increasing water level will be drained through the overflow tube to the bowl. One thing to note is, the bowl refill tube and overflow tube must be some distance apart. Otherwise, if water overflowing happened, The increased water can get in touch with the bowl refill tube that leads all the way towards the main water storage. And we don't want toilet water touching our utility water for health related or psychological reasons. Also, we must set the tank refill level lower than the overflow tube so that no water is wasted unnecessarily. We can set that water tank level by adjusting the float screw up or down. Now, we hope you understand how a toilet works. Next time you go to the bathroom, You can think back the intricate mechanisms inside a toilet and appreciate the brilliant engineering behind them. To learn more interesting topic like this, please subscribe our Quasar Ed YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to remind you our next video. You can also tell us what you want to know in the comment section.